Today is day four of my trip to the Winter Star Party in the beautiful Florida Keys. A week of astrophotography on the beach. I've heard so many great things about this star party over the years, I just had to come and see what it was all about for myself. I also managed to convince Ash to come with me to the southern tip of Florida in February. Welcome to Big Pine Key, Florida, home of the Winter Star Party. This event is hosted by the Southern Cross Astronomical Society and attracts visitors from all over, especially ones that want to escape the cold. Ashley and I flew from Toronto to Miami and rented a Camaro convertible to drive the rest of the way. Flying with astronomy gear can be challenging, but we managed to bring two full astrophotography kits on this trip. More on this later. So me and the Winter Star Party, or WSP, have something in common. We both turned 40 years old this year. Some of the people we've met here have been coming here for over 20 years straight without missing a single party. And they told me about some of the unfortunate damage this poor park has seen over the past few years. Hurricane Irma back in 2017 wiped out a lot of the original structures in the park. What you see right here used to be the women's bathroom and they never did find the structure wind gusts of 142 miles per hour and just look at the damage left behind and of course we also know there was significant flooding they had been and then Shane you can't add another one you change the existing one right from flat to dark so just a lot of yeah. I heard more interest in about that portion of it than yeah. the entire scope yeah. oh, where can I get this the location the star party is held at is pretty special you're 80 miles off the mainland on this little patch of land in the middle of the ocean. It's at a latitude of 24 degrees, which means some of the Southern Hemisphere targets are visible low in the sky. And yes, that includes Carina. I took a little time lapse to show Carina rising over the ocean. Yep, it's that low. Ashley tried to capture Carina using her telescope, but I'm pretty sure she only managed to capture one sub exposure before the clouds rolled in. She tried. We stayed in the glam tents on the south side of the key. This was a really convenient option for us because we flew down. They also helped to create a bit of a wind block, which came in really handy because it was windy down there. On the fourth night, I picked up my entire setup and moved it beside the tent to help keep that guiding steady. I think we were located on the windiest section of the entire park, right on the shore. There were some great astrophotographers there and it was really nice to share some tips and tricks in person. This is one of the best parts about star parties. A lot of people seem to like the refractor I brought, the William Optics Pleiades 68. This is an f3.8 astrograph with a super wide focal length of 270 millimeters. If you're looking into this scope, make sure the spacers are included. This little scope is picky about the backspacing, about 57.5 millimeters to be exact. As for targets, I focused nearly all of my efforts on the Witch Head Nebula in Orion. This is a reflection nebula that requires dark skies and a healthy integration to do justice. I ended up with about three hours of good data using my full frame one shot color camera and no filter. I'm thrilled with the way it turned out and I want to show you how great the data looked. So we're just in PixInsight here and I'm going to blink through my sub exposures so you can see the idea here was obviously the Witch Head Nebula. I wanted to capture the whole thing because it's quite a long target. And so this is at 270 millimeters, really wide in a full frame sensor. So it's a really big target. And I intentionally chose to include the bright star Rigel in there. So you can see how I just did my best to capture as much of the witch head as I could with that star Rigel in there. And I think it was the right choice because that's the star that kind of illuminates the object. So I think it made for a really cool framing. So those are my you know, individual sub exposures there. Here is the stack, uh, which I used weighted batch pre-processing for. I've been using that a lot lately instead of Deep Sky Stacker and I'm pretty happy with the results. I think I'll be using that a lot more often. So stay tuned for, for more on that. Here's the, the stack and with a quick auto stretch, you can see how excited I was when I, I first did this to see all of that incredible data in there. Even more exciting, um, when I ran Star Exterminator on this, uh, a little farther down the process, look at this image of the Witch Head Starless. 
And at first I was like, oh, you know, star, star exterminator, it's, it didn't do a perfect job. It still left some stars in there, but those are galaxies. So it knew to leave those galaxies in there and not remove them. I think there might be one or two stars, but look at these little galaxies in there. How amazing is that? So I had just so much fun with this data. And then over here is, this is the final image I came up with, with the witch head. And I'm just so stoked with it. I think it's mostly due to the fact that it was a really dark sky site and I was able to get three great hours of data on it. Uh, but the framing turned out really well, the colors. I'm so happy with this image. Star parties always seem to have the perfect mix of visual astronomers and astrophotographers. From giant daubs and ladders to compact refractors and tracking mounts. We were lucky enough to catch some amazing views through our neighbor's visual scope. Orion and the Rosette Nebula were great, but nothing tops the view of Eta Carina we saw over the ocean. I have no words. As we hogged the eyepiece and demanded to see more targets, our imaging rigs fired away in the background. Traveling on a plane to an astronomy event really forces you to narrow down an ultra portable kit. Not having to pack a counterweight for the AM5 or the AM3 for that matter is pretty sweet. A setup like this is pretty close to the perfect travel rig in my book. February is a tough month for astrophotographers in the Northeast. So imaging Orion and flip-flops was a nice change of pace. The winter star party happens every year around this time and I can't see why we wouldn't try to come every year from now on. If you're thinking about coming next year, be prepared for the wind and start thinking about what you can actually fit in your carry-on bag. What can I say? This was a great trip. I love going to star parties, but this one felt different. A milestone. Standing on the shore, looking up at Canopus, Vela, the Southern Cross. These kinds of nights are rare and they're important. I know there's a lot of lone wolf backyard imagers out there, and trust me, I get it. But this year you should try to get out to a star party, and maybe I'll see you there. <laughs>